So the big news is that Microsoft has just announced official support for Windows 11 on Apple Silicon running virtual machines in parallels. Now myself, I switched from Windows to Mac back in 2013 when I realized that Windows ran better on a virtual machine on a Mac than on a PC machine natively. Although at that time I used VMware Fusion since this was way before Parallels was in the picture, but many people ran Windows using Apple's bootcamp technology instead. But when the M1 Apple Silicon machines came out in 2020, running Windows on a Mac was thrown into a big question. Bootcamp was no longer an option since Apple likely won't revive it. And VMware has been struggling with getting their virtualization for Apple Silicon completed and didn't even have a working beta until 2022. Apple said that Windows could run fine natively on Apple Silicon, but it would require Microsoft to do some work to get the drivers in place for Windows to work properly similar to what Asahi Linux is doing right now for Linux. This is where Parallels really took off as the best and only good option to run Windows on a Mac. And just because they were the only option, they didn't just sit on their hands. They actually made the product better and they made something pretty incredible. I myself have been using Parallels flawlessly to run Windows on my M1 and then M1 Max and now my daily driver, the M2 Max. And if you're interested in getting a copy or discounts, check the link down below. I'll include any discounts I find on Parallels right now. There's also a 14 day free trial if you wanna try it out. By the way, I'm not sponsored uh, by Parallels for this video. I just really, really like using it and I'm about to show you why. Now, Microsoft is not just gonna make the drivers for Apple hardware, at least not anytime soon. There's no incentive for Microsoft to do that, to devote the resources towards making and maintaining all these drivers. The Asahi team, they're, they're working really hard to get this stuff out the door and it's not even complete yet. It's easier to just run a virtual machine. I just did a video on the channel where I ran Linux VM versus native Mac OS and Linux actually ran some code faster. Check that video out. And also if you need x86 support or x64 support, you can just run a Linux virtual machine on your Mac and then take advantage of Rosetta 2, which is a really good translation layer that runs on Apple Silicon to translate x86 programs to uh, ARM versions on the fly. It's not the best performance. It's not like running ARM natively, but the end result is actually more capable than what you would get on a Surface, for example, running ARM version of Windows 11. Now, Microsoft has also been trying to release their own ARM-based hardware with very limited success because of their reliance on Qualcomm chips. And these chips don't hold a candle to Apple's SOCs. I've made several detailed videos about their Project Volterra that came out at the end of last year. This is ARM-based hardware designed by Microsoft for developers. It's a capable machine, but it's severely held back by its main processor. Official support for Windows 11 through a partnership with Parallels is a huge deal. It's no longer risky for authorized dealers to offer this as an option for customers. Windows 11 can now be just installed and unlocked. Now, if you've tried Parallels with Windows before, you know it's been super easy to install Windows in Parallels for a couple of years now, but the latest version of Parallels allows you to install Windows with one single click. I'll show you this in a second, but as far as licensing goes, I'm not exactly 100% sure how that's going to work out. TBD. This is the official announcement on Microsoft's site about uh, options for using Windows 11 with a Mac with Apple Silicon chips. Of course, they have to include something like this. Windows 11 runs best on a PC designed for Windows. But when that's not available, uh, then you got these other options. You can run it in the cloud, use our cloud. We are Microsoft got to use our cloud, but if not available, then you can use Parallels Desktop. It is an authorized solution for running ARM versions of Windows. That's huge. Now, there are some limitations here. Games, um, other DirectX 12 or OpenGL 3.3 or greater, uh, these might have some issues. Experiences that depend on additional layers of virtualization, so like virtualization inside virtualization, are not supported. This includes Windows subsystem for Android. If you need to use that, well, sorry, can't do it. Windows subsystem for Linux. WSL 2 doesn't work, but WSL 1 one actually does. WSL1 is not as good as WSL2, and I made a video showing how to use WSL1 
inside a virtual machine in Windows running in parallels running on a Mac. Oh my gosh, this is gonna give me a headache. You might as well just install a Linux virtual machine on a Mac that's ARM based and you're gonna have no issues. Then Windows Sandbox, a lightweight desktop environment to safely run applications in isolation. And then virtualization based security, which enables customers to create an isolation. I don't know what that is, sorry. Here's Parallels, I'm on the latest version. I'm gonna create a new machine here and it's gonna be a Windows machine. Uh, so here you can have all these options right out of the box, including Mac OS. I'm just gonna click this button right here for Windows and click install Windows. The first thing it's gotta do is download the installation file. I have pretty fast internet, so this shouldn't take that long. Less than a minute remaining. And Windows is starting up. I started that around 11 a.m. I'm gonna go through it and time it and we'll see how long this whole process takes for me to get onto the Windows desktop. While that's happening, I do have Parallels Professional Edition, which allows you to use pretty much all the cores you have available on the host, which on my M2 Max, there's 12 cores, so you can use all of those. Here is a Windows machine, my previous installation. Right now I'm allocating eight cores to it. The new one, let's see, hardware. For the new one, it automatically allocates four cores and eight gigs of RAM. If I allocated more to it, uh, I bet the installation would go even faster. <laughs> Here's my Ubuntu installation, Ubuntu, where I allocated 12 cores. I guess for Windows, it only allows you the maximum number of cores on the machine, minus two. So 10 is the maximum. Or maybe I can do 12 here. Yeah, it says if you select 12, using all Mac processors will cause system stability issues. So it recommends using less, like 10 is the maximum it recommends. And that's fine. That's plenty for a virtual machine, especially if you're going to be running multiple versions of Windows at the same time. You're gonna to wanna to allocate maybe four cores to this one, four cores to that one. If you wanna simulate a farm, for example, if you Installation complete, click to continue. Windows licensing agreement, it's 1107. So you need to read that and agree to it. Ah, this is the answer to the question. They pop up a window saying installation successful and you need to activate your copy of Windows by clicking this link right here. This is how they do the licensing, I guess, through Parallel's website. But I noticed that there is no little watermark here that says this is an unauthorized copy of Windows running, at least not yet. One click and I'm in Windows in seven minutes. There's my Edge browser. I can watch my videos and that's actually really good there's no delay there's no it's really smooth it's windows running on a mac and one cool thing that this thing has that you can do if you really wanted to if you don't like being inside a window you can enter coherence if i'm in coherence mode i'm on a mac desktop and i'm just using edge and whatever software i have open in windows right here on my mac desktop not handy for an edge browser because well Edge, you can just get that natively for a Mac. But if you're doing like Visual Studio, for example, you can have Visual Studio window open right inside your Mac. If you wanna try Parallels again, use my link down below. Check out my recent video I just did on virtualization versus native right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.